Hello everyone. About a year ago I did a project where I built a Game Boy Zero. This is effectively, as the name says, a Raspberry Pi Zero inside of a Game Boy case. This is so you can enjoy classic retro gaming um, with RetroPi, which has a bunch of emulators for consoles, and you can enjoy those games handheld on the go mobile. Um, it's a fun little build. It's well documented on the Pseudomod forums. So I'll leave a link below if you're interested. Um, the only really bits uh, of custom circuitry you need for this is a circuit board to handle the buttons for the Game Boy case. That then wires up to a Teensy board, which effectively makes these button presses keystrokes. Makes it a little bit easier to configure inside uh, RetroPi. Um, that wires up to a USB hub. Um, which also you can break out extra USB uh, ports if you want to. Um, inside of here is also a sound card for the speaker and a power circuit board for the LiPo battery so we can convert the 3.7 volts to uh, 5 volts to power the Raspberry Pi. That doesn't leave a lot of space inside of the case. You have to do quite an extensive uh, bit of modifications inside of the case to make all of this fit. You also have to cut out the bigger screen. Um, while I was doing this build uh, on the Pseudomod forums, I came across a post by a gentleman called uh, Kite Retro, which was making the Kite Circuit Sword board, um, which is an all-in-one board that has all these components on one circuit board, and it makes use of the Raspberry Pi Compute module, which is way more powerful than the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero inside this one. Um, at the time, he wasn't taking any orders, uh, so I completed my Raspberry Pi Zero build. Um, but earlier this year, he had another batch of pre-orders and I hopped onto that. And I recently received my Kite Circuit Sword. So I thought, well, I haven't looked at everything yet, but I thought, let's do a video and uh, do the build. Okay guys, so this is pretty much everything that we'll need for this build. The Kite Circuit Sword kit that um, I ordered, uh, and obviously the extra bits and pieces that we'll need to uh, create this build. The Kite Circuit Sword board is, 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 is a really impressive bit of kit uh, for this build. It really takes a lot of the extra bits and pieces that you would have had to have done um, for the, the Game Boy Zero build where you would have to create the Teensy board, your charging board, um, audio amplifier etc. It's all built into this already so you don't actually have to do much soldering at all to, 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 co to complete this build. Um, like I mentioned it makes use of the Raspberry Pi compute module so that gives us a bit of extra power compared to the Pi Zero. Simply slots in there and um, you pretty much good to go. So this board has a, a built-in USB hub to kind of take care of all the extra bits and pieces you need. Um, it has extra LED indicators which uh, will give you the power indicator, charging indicator, Wi-Fi activity and Raspberry Pi activity. Um, I mentioned the charging, it's got a charging circuit built in uh, it's got a micro SD slot, it's got an audio amplifier and a headset jack already uh, soldered onto the board. Uh, it's, uh, it's got a temperature activated fan, which is new in this kit, um, which I got, uh, that we'll be uh, putting in. It's got a safe circuit switch um, to help you shut down your Pi neatly, um, is included in this kit. Um, I did mention it's got uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, built-in. It's got a full-size USB port that will come to now. The built-in USB-C obviously as I mentioned for charging. Um, and what else? Oh, this screen. This is as part of the kit you, you do get a uh, 320 by 240 uh, standard screen as with most of the builds um, which simply connects with the ribbon cable at the rear of the kit. Um, the extra little bits and pieces obviously I covered the switch that uh, comes as part of the kit. Um, for the side board, we, there's, there's two options. You can either have, or both have USB, um, an extra USB port where you can plug, uh, I don't know, micro, uh, sorry, a, uh, a thumb drive or something into that connects via the ribbon cable that's supplied in the kit um, onto the 
the circuit sort board there but you have an option of either having HDMI output so you can connect this to a screen or a volume knob now I'm going to go for the HDMI out. I think that's just a nice little party trick. Um, for those that don't, that does my option that I'm going to do instead of having the volume knob, the circuit sword board um, as part of here by the power button, there's an option here to solder in a extra momentary uh, switch so that you press that as a function button and hold the D-pad down or up and that's actually your uh, software volume control. So um, I'll be using that rather than um, an actual physical volume knob to um, adjust the volume. The last little bit in, in terms of the circuit sword kit is um, the back plate, which you can have an either uh, option of uh, four buttons or two buttons. I'll just be going for the two buttons, um, which we'll be putting at the rear of the um, case, roughly around about there. So the two bumper buttons at the back when you're playing, um, we'll be putting those in there. Now, I haven't ordered it yet, but um, there is some battery options that we can put in this case without actually modifying the case. I'm going to be looking into that, but I haven't, I haven't ordered that yet. Um, purely because it's a LiPo battery and getting LiPo batteries is a bit of a pain in the UK. Um, what else? Uh, obviously we order all the bits and bobs that we need for the build. I, I've decided, I, I was indecisive, I wasn't sure whether to go for a clear case or a um, regular case. Green was definitely going to be the colour this time. Um, but I'm leaning towards the clear case actually. Um, I just like the idea of seeing the insides, although I don't think it's going to show off as much as I hoped. Um, you, I certainly think we won't see the compute module purely because of all the bits that goes into the back of the, the case. Um, I did mention the fan. Um, one option that you can do if you go for the fan route is to have some 3D parts printed. Now this is a little fake um, cartridge that we're going to put in the rear. Whoops. We're going to put in the rear of the case as normal but the fan will actually be mounted in the case, um, oh, sorry, be mounted in the, the, the cartridge. And I don't know if you can see, but there's vents over here. So the fan will roughly sit, uh, let me get the orientation right, it's this way around. Uh, it will be screwed in like that. It's got a bit that goes over the top and it's actually an extruder fan, so it will suck the air in and out through the rear. And as I did mention, the card circuit sword board has got a heat temperature activated um, circuit to turn the fan on um, to help with cooling. Um, some of the other 3D bits I've gotten is um, a screen mount, which will just help you actually, the screen slots in like that. And then once I've cut um, the standoffs out of the board, will literally fit into the here um, in the case where we can actually then drill the holes for the extra buttons and will neatly sit in there and actually then provide standoffs again to mount your um, the rear of the case back onto the to the front uh, half. So that's obviously a, a good extra um, bits to order is these extra 3D printed parts. I, I do feel it completes it a bit more. Um, another piece is this piece over here, which we actually mount the rear plate um, onto. It will go like, uh, sorry, the other way around. It will go like that onto the board. Uh, we just solder uh, six little wires into here, which connect uh, through the or oh, if memory serves me right, I think it goes into the um, uh, USB sideboard um, back through the ribbon cable onto the actual card circuit board. Um, so this also goes, if we grab the rear of this, this literally fits um, right in there as such. Um, so you will just uh, drill the holes, drop your buttons into there, put the back plate on, and um, we'll have the two little bumper buttons at the rear there. Uh, what else? Uh, there's a, um, another little mounting bracket that you have printed. This is to actually hold the um, switch, the on-off switch. Uh, on, let me just get my head around how this mounts. 
uh, this basically drops into the re uh, um, the rear of the, the 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 case over here. How does this fit? Like so, and your switch mounts like that. So again, just a nice easy way of actually mounting this without using too much hot glue. Um, then the, 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 the momentary switch that I mentioned earlier for the power, uh, sorry, for the volume option, actually is gonna sit through this little hole right here. We'll be soldering that onto there. Um, yeah, it just makes it nice and easy to mount and we'll just be um, epoxying that into the case over there. Uh, what else? Um, I did mention the LED indicators. Um, they do give you a little guide. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. They do give you a little guide um, to drill little holes. If you have a normal case um, at the top, you can drill the holes um, to actually see the activity of the uh, um, the Raspberry Pi, the Wi-Fi, the charging and the power. Um, but because I've got a clear case, I'm not going to bother with that. We'll be able to see it through the um, shell of the, the Raspberry Pi. Um, obviously the extra little bits like the silicon pads that we'll need. And that is about it. Um, there's nothing else extra we'll need for this uh, build. Um, I'm hoping it won't take me too long. I'm not going to cover the full build of the um, project because I think there's enough build videos and guides out there but I just wanted to share that I'm doing this and I'm quite excited about this. I think this this kite circuit sword board is, is, is really a piece of uh, great engineering for lovers of this kind of retro pipe projects because um, with previous builds there's been good circuit boards but not really that really encapsulates everything that we need and makes it such an easy build to make. Okay, so an update on where we are with the project. I did all the case modifications. I cut the uh, screen area out for the bigger screen. I cut the X and Y button holes out. I made the USB-C connector slot, uh, the rear back button bumper holes, and I did a small modification to the case at the bottom here. The standard case has a small uh, standoff for the headphone jack, um, but that was putting pressure on the circuit board. Um, pushing it down a bit, so I just dremeled that out just to um, not put any uh, strain on the circuit board or bend it. But I have a confession, um, I'm, I'm not happy with the way this is looking. Um, because of the extensive case mods you have to do to make all this uh, fit, um, you obviously have to remove a fair bit of the standoffs, the original standoffs inside the case, especially there, 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 here, and up there, still visible. Now, it just doesn't look great in my opinion. Um, you can see that it was um, cut off or broken off, especially this one by the, the button here at the bottom. It looks quite obvious and noticeable. Um, and I'm, I'm just, and I, I made a tiny little scratch there with the X-Acto knife uh, when I was cutting them out. Um, so yeah, I'm not happy with that. I'm, I, I don't want it to show any sort of scratches or damages on the inside and make it look uh, fairly amateur build. So what I've actually decided is um, I'm gonna go with the normal solid color green uh, front of the case and I'm gonna actually put it on top of the see-through bit of the rear. Um, so it, it still kind of gives me benefits of both worlds. Um, all the inside modifications are actually now hidden um, but I still have a bit of a fun with the see-through case at the rear. I can kind of see the insides of the case. Uh, also an, another obvious um, issue because the, the the screen is actually curved here at the bottom right um, I would have probably had to come up with a solution to kind of hide the screen um, on the see-through case over here because that would be actually shining through the case um, and with the actual screen um, also have this black line it, it would look quite obvious that some of the screen is going to be shining out at the bottom here. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm just not happy with that. Um, so I'm going to go with a plan B solution, which is going to be a mix and match uh, of uh, shells. So see-through bottom and a normal top. The only thing I have to do extra now is, I, like earlier in the video I mentioned I'm not going to bother with the um, status indicator holes, um, but I will be drilling that now. 
Okay, so I've pretty much finished the build. It went nice and quick and smooth uh, to finish this build. Uh, I think once you've modded the case, it's pretty much not much le work left to do. Um, the build is way easier than the Game Boy Zero build, purely because you don't have to worry about fitting all the different parts inside the case, wiring it all up, making sure that it works after you've um, put it all together, um, and you know, worry about space inside the case. The circuit sword uh, board made by Kite is really, really well designed. It's got everything you need on board. Um, it's got the three little extra um, breakout boards that you that you use for the power switch, the um, USB, oh, sorry, the other side, the USB and uh, micro HDMI connector, um, and then the two little uh, back bumper buttons. Um, but other than that, it's it's really easy to make. Um, I cannot emphasize enough how much easier it was to use 3D printed parts to put this together than to try and figure it out for yourself. So I cannot highly stress or recommend to go the 3D printed route. Um, even if you don't have a 3D printer, try and make use um, of a online uh, retailer that can do it for you or maybe ask a friend nicely to do it for you but yeah the build is is, is really easy um, that way because everything just fits together um, and you don't have to worry about things moving about or securing them with a lot of effort right so I thought just before I finish or completely finish it I'll just show one last uh, one time the inside of the board or inside of the um, the Game Boy so as you can see, uh, I'll start from this uh, from the the back end. So we've got this the switch there, the HDMI and USB um, sideboard here, the back um, button board, and the fan inside the little 3D printed cases inside there. Um, I still have to connect that up because it, it's not a very long cable. It's a very short little cable, and the, the connector's right at the top here. I couldn't connect that and open it up um, to show you guys what it looks like. Um, a single ribbon cable that connects everything on the back uh, of the shell to the main board. Um, and obviously the compute modules in there, the micro SD I've connected, and um, the speaker at the bottom here is connected and wired and soldered into place. So in terms of soldering, um, the only things you'll solder is the mode button switch that you have to put in. The six uh, points here for the back plate. You actually don't need all six because I'm only using the two button configuration. But I thought I'll leave it in there in case I ever want to change it or if I want to you know, make it so that I want to use um, R1, R2, L1 and L2 buttons. Um, and the other, any other soldering was the actual... Um, uh, speaker and then you connect it at the bottom yeah but yeah in terms of, that's it um, nothing much I mean the 3d printed parts uh, like I said takes care of the screen housing for you um, the switch it really makes it easy to put the switch in place especially with the mode button and um, securing it nicely in place um, the fan 3d printed fan housing is really um, easy and it, the guys really thought cleverly of, of you actually make use of where you screw the switch um, mount into place there's just a little offset that actually holds the um, 3d printed case in place and same on the other side and also the little uh, standoffs here to actually keep the back plate um, in place is really well thought of um, you see a lot a little bit of a white electrical tape I could not find my black electrical tape so this is all I've got at the moment but yeah um, I'd emphasize to do this um, because especially the mode button switch right here um, makes contact with the USB C connector and that will give you a false positive when you try and use the the, the Game Boy because it will always be on and none of the buttons will work well they will work but in mode mode <laughs> Um, but not in its regular um, configuration. So you, you get a bit of a shock when suddenly none of your buttons are working. Or at least not as you expect them. But yeah, that's it. Um, nothing else to do other than to put it all together. And um, I did test it just to make sure that it is working. Um, but yeah, from here on I can now actually load some games. 
and uh, I might give you guys a little demo but that's the build really great really fun uh, Kite you did an awesome job building this uh, board uh, when you had the first prototypes out I wanted to get one I missed the first order but I'm happy that I've made the second order because I think some of the the customizations you've done on the second revision um, is really awesome and I, I really can't wait to play with this um, and, and enjoy some really classic gaming so yeah awesome Well, there you have it. Uh, a very happy customer with a great end product. Uh, I say it again, I think Kite Retro did an awesome job with the Kite Circuit Sword board. Um, to put all those components onto one board, make use of the compute module for the extra power, makes life a lot easier. I, I think the most time I spent on this was the case modifications um, and obviously waiting for the epoxy to dry. Um, highly recommend the 3d printed parts it, it makes it putting all this together so much easier um, but yeah um, awesome if you've thought about doing this i highly recommend getting on kite retro's uh, mailing list so you can get notified when he does the next uh, pre-order for the circuit sword board um, yeah really happy really enjoyed and uh, now for some classic gaming hope you enjoy the video